Hello everyone and welcome to the one-on-one -on -one sessions with Coco Mosori and I'm your host Coco M. Giving you tips, lessons and advices regarding African spirituality. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about what Sangomas need to be careful of. Okay, so this one is mainly for Sangomas, um, people, maybe someone who just found out that they have a gift and they are starting to embark on their journey, you're starting to help people or you've been helping people for a while. So these are guidelines, warnings, what you need to be careful of, okay? So, because that's, here's the thing, guys, man. Being a healer is a very, very, very risky job, okay? Um, you are born with it and you are obligated to actually use this gift that you've been given by your ancestors to help people, which is great, which is wonderful. But in the process of it, you will have some, you will encounter some problems. You'll encounter some difficulties. You'll encounter some challenges. And you need to know how to go about these challenges. So I'm actually talking about this, this topic just so healers, um, people that are starting to embark on their healing journey know what it is that they need to be careful of, especially in terms of consulting people, in terms of helping people. You never know what will come your way when you're helping your person. So it's very important that you are very vigilant, very careful, very, like, you just need to pay attention to everything, pay attention to detail, even the slightest, the smallest detail. Is something that you need to pay attention to. So I noted them things down. And first of all, you need to be careful of people that are sent. Okay. This is one thing that most Sangomas actually struggle from. People being sent to them. Okay. Your job is to help people. Is to heal people. Anyone can knock through your door. Like come to your house and say, well, I need help. And that's understandable. You need to go and help these people. But there will be people that will be sent to to you by your enemies and the reason why they send them can vary okay some people watch like a milik or some people come with their own muti some people are there to see how powerful you are you know all those kind of things so be very careful about the people that are sent obviously sometimes you find out okay you see this person in your dream you're warned about this person if you're like you will see them and you'll be warned about them ne? so which is good meaning or you can just chase the person out you are going to consult this person but be very careful when you consult this person. Do not get blindsided by anything that this person might come with at the end of the day. So you need to speak to your ancestors at all times to help you see through people. See the people that are sent by your enemies to harm you, to hurt you. It's very important when you're in this line of work, okay? Number two, people that practice witchcraft and... okay. This one, I need to break it down for you guys. So there will come a time whereby a person comes to you. This person is experiencing this kind of um, disease, which is actually a muti disease, a disease because you can muti and stuff like that. And you find out when you look at the backstory of this person, this person, Utsamaile Ayosilka somewhere, went and threw their muti somewhere at somebody. And the person who was a victim to this person decided to make and go back to the sender ritual ne? well all the muti that person a has sent is returning from person b back to person a okay and those things if you share this person they are hurting this person so obviously the most logical thing you can do is go to a healer and try to get this thing removed or sent back to that person which is a very risky thing for a healer because one thing that can happen when you're dealing with a situation like this is that the mood which you're trying to help remove from person a which if we remember very well person a is the one who sent it to begin with to person b um when you're trying to remove that mood from person a due to like a back to the center kind of ritual what's going to happen is that the one thing is that you could get harmed as a healer you could get hurt like nobody's business all that voodoo stuff can just land on you because when you're trying to help this person or even if it just doesn't land on you it can stick to the both of you whereas the both of you can end up being hurt 
despite this initial muti that this person has used on somebody else and was returned to them. So it's very dangerous. So when you help a person, make sure that you understand the story behind their problem. Understand it fully because there are people that are going to come to you because one of us were magistrating muti to somebody else and this muti was sent back to them and it harmed them or it's hurting them and when you'll be put in a spot whereby you are also in so much danger and if you're not careful with it you can actually die from such a a, a a thing like such a situation can actually kill a person so you need to be very careful be very vigilant when you're helping a person understand the root of their problem where it came from where it started how it started and how you are supposed to go about it okay Okay, number three, it's people that come to you, tell you their problems and tell you that I, I know what I need. I need a cleansing or I need um, a tokolosh to be removed from my body or can I list you? I want you to remove that. Ne? And this person is then refusing to have a proper consultation whereby you will be shown all these things like yourself, whereby your ancestors will show you all these things and what's needed to help them. That is a very risky thing. Because certain people will come to you and tell you, well, I have this problem and they'll refuse to be consulted and they know what the minute you start and helping and help them, then something will happen to you as a healer. This is where people will try you. Okay, people will try you. So it's very important as a healer to consult a person before you give them your herbs, before you take them, you take them through any ritual, be it taking them to the water or just cleansing them or just giving them mutu to drink you know you need to consult a person first because people will come with their own techniques people will come with their own maneuvers to actually try and get to you and something like this is something that happens all the time because when i encounter people text me or call me or come through and say oh, i know what the problem is with me i just want you to help me with your herbs very risky business okay number four people bewitching your herbs okay so again when you consult a person, be very, very, very vigilant, okay? Because it happens that you can give someone a herb in term, in like when you're trying to help this person, like you're trying to help this person, you give this person a herb. But this person on their own already, this person was like, this person's doing their own voodoo things, okay? And what's going to happen is that that person can take that herb and bewitch it. Yeah? And when that happens, that is where Molore, if you gave this person a herb, you're for Sijisho you will get it. They'll send you this sejisho through it. If you gave a person herbs for um, cleansing, removing sfifi, they will bewitch the herbs and make sure that you get this certain amount of darkness. And at times, they can go as far enough as to actually kill you with your own herbs, to actually hurt you with your own herbs. So you need to be very careful about your herbs, who you give them to. Are your ancestors allowing it? Will this person not harm you at the end of the day after you trying to help them? Because people have their own issues. People have their own dramas and Someone who doesn't know me at all can pretty much wake up, pretty much wake up one morning and say, you know what, I'm attacking that chick. So it's very important for you to be very vigilant when you're consulting a person, especially in terms whereby your herbs will be taken out because not everyone is to be trusted. Actually, you don't trust anybody in this in this business you don't trust anybody you should always be very vigilant regardless of how long you've known this person how long you've helped a person because anything can come your way when you least expect it especially with your own helps okay number five okay so this is something that i'd say every sangoma encounters people will try you people try you wanting to see how powerful you are how strong you really are, how vigilant you really are, how like attentive your ancestors are. People try you with so many things, like so many times people will come and test you as a healer. Ne? And you need to be very, very, very vigilant of this, very careful of this. Because at first when I heard about people trying Sangomas, I thought to myself, well, nah, that's impossible. That's, that's completely impossible. Nobody would do that because it's a healer. Nah. It doesn't work like that at the end of the day you're still human 
and you can still be affected by the same thing a person who doesn't have a spiritual gift is affected too so people can and will try and test you and you need to make sure that you are always careful and you are always protected as a healer you make sure that your body is always protected you do not take risks with your life because you are constantly dealing with mood you're constantly dealing with voodoo spells that have been put on other people and if you're not careful you will fall victim to all these things you're trying to help people from and people are always there to see how powerful you truly are you know you have someone come and try and consult né? and this person even in the cause of the consultation you say, no man this person is actually here to actually test me this person just testing me i've encountered that before i don't want to lie i've encountered that and i guess with my very unique dark humor i've always known how to go about it in an amusing way for myself but it's a very annoying situation to find yourself in and you need to be careful of these people that will do that to you remember that people that do that to you that come and test you that come and try you to see how powerful you are are capable of doing more at the end of the day so be very careful even when you give this kind of a person a help be very 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 careful okay um number six people will close your luck and make sure that nobody ever comes to consult or get help from you again this usually happens when the people come to your sh like domba like they come personal even over the phone is possible but usually when it's done in person the people will come with their own muti Nah. they might come with muti that they paid with or muti that they have in their hands they know when you're not looking they'll just spray the muti around you know those kind of things so it happens that people will come to your domba to your to your to your place with muti prepared for you and their main goal will be to close your luck and make sure that nobody ever comes and consults to you it's a very very interesting situation but it's usually caused by people that you know you might find out this person was sent by someone that you know by an enemy of yours or it's just someone who knows you personally maybe someone you refer to as a friend um a colleague a you know those kind of relationships more you can't really know what what are people's intentions towards you in your life so people will come with their muti to your domba and they will try to close and block your luck and make sure that nobody ever comes and consults from you or completely to make sure what went up completely you can't see anything anymore because it's possible that you can actually have someone come over consult this person and what this person will do is that they will have their muti ready for you and the minute you are with that person the muti is already working on you and you'd find out after this person leaves you can like oh, man, usabuni, your things ne? if you're a prophetic person you'll be praying or doing whatever ritual you do before you start prophesying for people but nothing comes you are blocked completely or still you can continue to see as usual but final worry, there's no one who's actually coming to consult or seek for help and all those things. Because to be honest, it's an unusual thing to be a healer and have completely nobody looking or coming to get help from you. It's a very, very interesting situation. It's something that you need to look at as a healer to make sure nothing shady has been done to you and your gift for this to happen. Okay, so it's very important. And number seven muti that can be placed on money for consultation okay so this is this is something a lot of people are skilled with <laughs> uh, i'm sorry for putting it like that but do you know how it is and even if it's not money for consultation money in general be careful of people who are got to it especially as a healer even when you're not a healer it happens a lot okay so this is why most of the times as a sangoma you do not hold money in your hands or take money from like another person in their hands or in your hands in a sense like you don't do that because what happens is that a person can come to you looking for consultation but knowing what the money that they have in other it's mutified that's a new term but it works the money is mutified and one the minute you touch it something happens to you. usually with money they block your luck they just make sure that a lot of bad things just happen to you in your life so it's very very important for you to be careful in terms of your money that's why as a sangoma you do not touch anyone's money with your bare hands you don't especially when people come and consult they put the money where they have to put them and when you're done consulting them you know what you have to do with the money to protect it 
to make sure that even if there's muti there, it doesn't work on you whatsoever. You know what to do. So stick to that thing. It's going to save your life more times than you can count. And it's going to save your lives in moments that you don't even think of it. Okay. Because money is actually one of the, like it's energy. Money is energy. Okay. And it's the easiest way in which a person can actually harm you as a healer and even when you're not a healer it's the easiest way so be very very careful okay be very vigilant be very careful and make sure that at all times you protect yourself as a healer especially when you're working with people on a regular basis this is not an easy job to do and you are constantly at risk whether you like to hear it or not or want to admit it or not you are constantly at risk okay so that's it that's um my warning to sangoma um what you need to be careful of what you should be aware of and how you have to attend to things remember that at the end of the day you never know who's gonna come to you what they're gonna come with and how whatever it is they come with is going to affect you so be very careful okay i hope this was very educational i hope you guys enjoyed this bye bye I'm